Hello and welcome to Toneless Paintings by M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting we're talking about today is Forest Path, and it is a 10 by 14. Um, I completed Forest Path probably about three weeks ago. It was part of the uh, um, my next to last pass of paintings I done, and uh, um, I guess in the second tier of uh, relative success, I had. Uh, one other painting I felt was, you know, really successful, and Forest Path I thought was good, and um, that's why I'm uh, showing it to you today. Now, you can almost rest assured I very rarely will put up any of my real clunkers up here, um, you know, and in fact, one of my big uh, tips that I give amateurs is to destroy their bad paintings and bad drawings. Uh, don't keep them around. Um, and even if, you know, uh, bad is a relative term, of course, but, uh, you know, if it's bumming you out to look at it, get rid of it. Keep your successes around uh, and, uh, and get rid of the losers. Uh, destroy them. Um, and I do recommend actually physically destroying them. Otherwise, you might find them in somebody's house one day, um, which is a real bummer. Anyway, uh, this last week, I, like I said, I'd finished a, a pass of six, probably, uh, oh, I don't know, it was Monday or so, um, with sizes ranging from 10 by 14 up to 18 by 24. And uh, I'm real happy with all six of those paintings. Uh, I'm super ecstatic with uh, a couple of them. Um, like I said, I've got the photography done, whether I will actually get time to adjust that photography. Um, one of the things I need to do with the photography is I get these what are called specular highlights which are just little tiny bright glints where the, hit, the where the ridges of the paint have been hit. Um, I am working my way through those but uh, as I've indicated in um, my last couple uh, videos here I'm going out of town so um, and uh, that is getting really close. I'm actually it's Sunday here, and I'm leaving on Friday uh, next Friday, so um, And I have prepared uh, as I've also indicated in the past I've prepared videos uh, That YouTube will be trolling out as I'm gone, and I have every good intention of writing corresponding blog posts to those uh, while I'm on vacation so uh, you guys really won't see much of a gap. Um, I guess the big difference will be that it's not going to be, uh, the videos won't be live. They're like pre-recorded. Um, and actually this isn't even live anyway. I mean, I'm going to put this up. Usually, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I do them same day. And um, that won't be happening. But, you know, from your end, uh, it will be not such a big thing. Uh, and uh, like I said, you're going to get the, uh, the videos coming at you. So you will have an uninterrupted, uh, toneless flow in your life. And I guess the reason I was doing that is, um, you know, I have a pretty good following now. And it's it's gradually building. You know, I, I see a lot of um, uh, other painters on YouTube with, you know, lots of uh, uh, hits and following. And, uh, you know, that's great. Uh, mine's really been building, though. And... Um, you know, it's a positive thing. I think I don't have any, uh, you know, it doesn't bother me if, if someone else has more hits or whatever. That's not really ever been my motivation as an artist. Uh, I like it when people connect with my work, but the main reason to do work is to uh, to do it and to um, do it for yourself mostly and do it uh, to get better at it and because we must do something and that is uh, what I've chosen to do, and I'm pretty happy. Um, last, uh, let's see, well, last week I, I have, uh, I mean, like I said, I finished a series of six, and uh, I've done some photography, and um, I have set up a couple of, actually I did two little 5 by 7s I had an intention of getting two full-size paintings done prior to leaving on my trip, and... Uh, I might still get, I don't know if I'll get them done. I've got uh, three or four more work days there in the studio. Um, of the five by sevens I did, I did two. I had two subjects selected. One is really strong and I'm really excited to do it. The other one, uh, I opted out of uh, painting that larger um, and I feel real good about that because um, 
in the past many times I would just keep moving ahead uh, with my plan even if my intuition was telling me something wasn't really killer and it works as a five by seven I just think I don't know it's kind of got this color issue it's a bit dreary and uh, uh, it doesn't need to be realized as a large painting um, on these two large paintings uh, so what I did yesterday uh, which was Saturday here is um, I I basically did a a painting over the top of an old painting um, and I think it's one I featured here in my revisits and uh, I've decided to scale it up a bit so I had done this an 8 by 8 and the one I did yesterday was 11 by 11 over the top of this painting that wasn't really the worst painting I've ever done but it was kind of I don't know it was kind of saccharine I didn't like the colors in it and I'm actually totally stoked to have uh, covered it up um, we'll have to see uh, uh, I, I don't know when I get back in the studio tomorrow how I feel about the painting I did yesterday I think it's uh, it's good um, it's one of these ones where I was laying things in real thick and uh, I'm still getting used to that <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, uh, actually it's really worked out well in these past six, even though I thought, wow, this is so thick, I don't know if this is working out, you know, after scraping it down, um, I really like the quality I'm getting, and, um, it's solid, you know, uh, it's a little more work to lay in the thicker paint and to have more paint on the surface, but... Uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this is just so the paintings stand up over time, you know, that they're solid over time. Um, uh, mostly because oil paint will become more translucent and transparent over time, uh, which is something I've kind of rediscovered uh, after reading a book um, that a friend recommended to me. And, uh, you know, that's wisdom, folks. You know, you get information and you incorporate it into your life. You know, they it's one thing to just accumulate knowledge you know just for the sake of knowledge but what's really good is to take that knowledge and put it into practice to constantly be improving you know and not in a way that's all heavy-handed but in a way that is uh, life affirming and moving forward and evolving you know anyway let's see what else is going on here so uh, topics in this blog today. This is going to be going up on the World Wide Web today. And today is September 25th, and it's a Sunday here in New Zealand. And right now it's about, uh, oh geez, it's about quarter to ten in the morning. And uh, we just had our daylight savings time, so this would have been mm, a little earlier. Um, but uh, no big deal, actually. You know, the sun's out. Uh, well, the sun is now, but the, it's light. It's daylight, so we're good. We're working. Everybody's happy. Um, I'm thinking the topic that I'm going to uh, do today on the blog, I have a little list of potential topics, and I'm thinking of uh, mm, probably the topic of where red meets green and some of the ways to deal with greens in, in landscape painting. And uh, I'm probably... <sighs> I probably talked about this before in the blog. To be honest, I uh, probably have a lot more repetition than uh, I even know about because uh, I tend to be, um, what do my students call me? A pedantic, I believe is the word. Uh, the things that I believe and the things that I put into practice in my work, I do very consistently and... Um, dealing with greens in the landscape is a really big one and I have just a few insights there It'd probably be a short blog post but you know it could be a crucial bit of information for somebody out there struggling and uh, you know this uh, blog is not just for people trying to learn how to paint um, it's actually for anybody that uh, loves art and loves landscape painting or likes my work um, I guess the angle that I decided to take uh, fairly early on was to um, sort of pose as an instructor um, so I would have something to talk about and something to say that um, you know this has been internalized information so I don't have to research it because I live and breathe it every day that's my little dog burfing in the background there I think he hears a bird or a cat um, and 
little Denny uh, will be staying here while we are on holiday. He's staying with a really nice lady named Carol, and uh, hopefully uh, they're going to have a lot of fun while we're going, and uh, we'll be having a lot of fun too. Uh, so next week, uh, like I said, you won't be getting a, uh, you will be getting a blog post, you will be getting a video, but the video itself won't be uh, absolutely current. Um, but I have a few more work days, as I stated. I'm going to try and get another uh, another painting, uh, basically uh, laid in with color, and uh, maybe finish up the one I did yesterday, and even try and finish up that second one with the color. So we'll have to see how it goes, you know, um, and then. Uh, It'll be no more painting for a month, and uh, but I will be collecting some awesome reference and stuff, uh, both in England, especially in England. I really love that English countryside, uh, so you can expect that to influence and inform my future paintings totally. Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. If you'd like to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz. Check it out. You can follow my blog through there and uh, look at my paintings, and uh, we'll see you next week. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.